As someone who enjoys learning about things, I'm a big supporter of preserving culture, languages, arts, customs, traditions, whatever it may be. Of course, in terms of video games, that's true as well. So today I want to show you the Nintendo Switch game that has possibly some of the, if not the highest level of culture seen to date on the system. It's the fourth game in the Genkai Toki series, Seven Pirates H. This was originally a Vita game like all the other Genkai Toki games, but now like everything from the second game onward, it has found its way onto the Nintendo Switch and the title grew an H at the end to signify that it is a remaster. Monster Mon Piece was a card battle game. The second and third game, Moero Chronicle and Moero Crystal were both dungeon crawlers. The fourth game, Seven Pirates, is the first in the series to go 3D. This game is what we'll look at in this video. East Asia Soft provided me with the review code for the game, allowing me to work on the review before the game was released, so thank you very much. And then there's still one more game that needs to be released in the West, that's Genkai Toki Castle Panzas. I keep mentioning it because I want to see it released. Thankfully, going by this pattern, it should be. What all these games have in common is Monster Girls and a lot of fan service, with the bulk of the fan service coming from some sort of mini game. This video is about Seven Pirates H. Unlike its predecessors, it's now 3D and we have a pirate theme. I don't really like pirate themed things normally, but this game seems to be an exception. Seven Pirates is a traditional style RPG, not a dungeon crawler like the previous two games. I will compare Seven Pirates to Moe Chronicle and Crystal throughout the review, by the way. Let's start with the story. The main character is Parut Kairi, a human pirate. A compass falls on her head that points towards treasure. She decides that, because that happened, she must be the chosen one and goes on a quest to find all seven treasures. Throughout the story, there's monster girls that join your party. It's sometimes stated that no male characters appear in the game, but that's not really entirely true. The series mascot Otan is back, and he's a guy. But there's no human or humanoid male characters, and I guess that's kind of the point. The story is very lighthearted with basically no serious moments at all, even more so than the previous games. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Basically, gameplay works like this. You have an overworld view, which serves as a menu, I guess. You can decide where to go here, basically. There will be dungeons which you can enter. Once you do so, it changes to a traditional third-person 3D perspective. Enemies run around on the map and battle starts when you come in contact with them. If you touch them from behind, then you have the first attack, and if it's the other way around, the enemy attacks first. Otherwise, turn order is dictated by agility. You've got the usual attack, which you can do you know, by pressing the A button. The directional buttons allow you to defend, flee, use items, or use special attacks. Special attacks use up MP, which you gain throughout the battle by attacking. You can even store up MP if you're just you know, doing a dungeon run there, but if you exit, and then go back into the dungeon, it'll reset, just so you know. If the MP meter is full, the character becomes aroused and there's certain special attacks you can do, just like in real life. Those are the strongest attacks and uh, there's weaker ones which don't need the meter to be full. So, you know, those are obviously an option too. And then all the other stuff like the items and also other special attacks or abilities are like you would find in other RPGs. You know, healing items, whether that be for status ailments or health itself. Some work on one character, while others affect the whole party. There is like an element system going on. I forgot the names, like pheromone something. But basically, it's red, blue, and green. So just think of them as like fire, water, and grass. And then you know which one beats which. It's pretty simple, and I recommend having at least one character with, like, you know, at least one character per element, and then uh, you'll do fine. Dungeons have treasure chests and little glittering harvest spots, which have items or things needed for quests. Usually you need to travel to various event markers for the story, but like I said, side quests do exist. It's the usual sort of thing where you either have to get certain items drops or maybe defeat a specific amount of specific monsters. Your reward can be anything from money, items, to pieces of the map. Bits of map, you guessed it, allows you to see and go to more parts of the world. In terms of equipment, things are kept very simple. Instead of having, like, you know, different armors and weapons, it's just two things, a bra and panties. Bras seem to be only tied to certain abilities or specials, while panties affect specific stats, just like in real life. 
While the gameplay is very much like a traditional JRPG, it does not feature a traditional leveling up system. Your characters will not collect experience. Instead, you'll get training extracts after collecting enough H extract from battle, which are used for, get ready for it, booby training. Each extract is like an equivalent level up. You use controller controls or the touch screen to massage a girl's attributes. I think the wording is correct here because no matter what you do, their stats increase, but depending what you do, can increase or decrease attributes like size, firmness, softness, perkiness, height, um, what's the other one? Cleavage. Each attribute, I suppose, is uh, tied to certain stats, and bigger isn't always better. The spider graph shows you where you're at with each attribute. Personally, I usually just go with what I think looks better or suits the character, because no matter what you do, your character will still get stronger. But I think the rule of thumb is basically more or bigger just means more attack, whereas the other way around is more focused on like speed and agility. But you'll learn that as you play the game, it tells you what's tied to uh, which stat. There's also extracts which you can get that provide a bit more of an effect in terms of breast attributes, but you don't get those as frequently. Eggs are something you gather when defeating monsters. There's different kinds and uh, they contain various items. Using rigorous techniques, you can break them and get the item inside. Sometimes there's no item and it's just a raw egg. But hey, depending on your view on things, that outcome could be fine too. Compared to Morero, Chronicle and Crystal, I think Seven Pirates gameplay is a bit simplified. With the two dungeon crawlers, the dungeons were so much more complicated and they had interactive elements. Battles are harder too, like each floor would require a bit, like a bit of grinding before you can easily go through, especially when a new dungeon was unlocked, then you had to do that uh, for a bit. I had to do much less grinding in Seven Pirates. Also, the previous two games had more dating sim elements with the room renovation thing, and then also those unlockable events, and then there's also the gift giving stuff. That just doesn't exist here in Seven Pirates. Well, let's talk about graphics. At this point, you probably already had a good look at the visuals. This was originally a Vita game and it shows, while the previous two dungeon crawlers had more simplistic graphics in many ways, they did look more refined with the well-done illustrations of the Monster Girls. Seven Pirates is a bit more bare looking, and it definitely is more bare when it comes to the dungeons. A lot of flat looking environments and simple textures, and there's just not much going on other than monsters, collection points, and chests. It all looks very much like a Vita Neptunia game, which isn't exactly ideal in terms of you know, when you want to have your game have its own visual identity. Even the event markers look the same. I'm not a fan of how the dungeons look, not just aesthetically, but also from a gameplay perspective. There's one dungeon where you think there's a dead end, until you look at the map and see that there should be a path there somehow. You have to go up the cliff and then Otan climbs up the wall. Like, couldn't there have been some sort of better, you know, better visual marker than nothing at all? Morero Chronicle and Crystal both had more interesting dungeon designs, like I said, with various interactive elements like locked doors and traps. With Seven Pirates, it's much more simplistic and less memorable. The characters look okay, but the lack of polygons are quite noticeable, particularly the faces and obviously the breasts. The cutesy art style is used to its max in order to cover up graphical sins, but it doesn't always quite work out. The enemy designs are actually very well done, I think uh, they made their transition to 3D without you know, losing their signature look. Bloom and blur effects are there too. In handheld mode, the game seems to run and pretty much look the same. I wouldn't say it runs at 60 frames per second, but yeah, it's for this type of gameplay, it's not really a problem. I primarily played docked, but if I remember correctly, in handheld mode, there was more of a blur effect. Also, the graphical shortcomings aren't as apparent when playing or when not playing on a TV or monitor, obviously, so so I wouldn't say it's really bad or anything. The flashy effects are probably the worst looking things about the graphics. Like in battles, you'll see how pixely and jagged they look, like the explosions, for example. The animations are worth talking about. Some characters run a bit weird, and while it's done partly for fan service reasons, like for example with Waffle, with her like exaggerated hip shaking, I still think that there's some unintended wonkiness going on. Of course, the game gives you a face full of jiggles, whether they're running around in a dungeon or fighting. Special attacks make sure to show off the girl's assets with creative camera angles and lingering shots. 
Something worth noting is that the breasts can get wonky for a variety of reasons. One example with Perut is that I increased her chest size the I think the first time I did the booby mini game, and then like her breasts clipped through her clothing, so then I had to make them higher so that wouldn't be the case. Also, once you start reaching a certain size, you can see that both the model and the textures end up looking quite stretched. It has a comedic element to it, but I'm not convinced that was intentional. I wish characters had alternate outfits like in the previous two games. I think each girl had four outfits there, but unfortunately that's not the case here. I will say that the characters do wear a different outfit for booby training and there's also an alternate swimsuit that matches their skin tone which can be activated in the DLC menu. But as far as I know, there's no way to have characters be in those outfits during normal gameplay. A small detail I like is how the characters will look at nearby enemies that they're, you know, running past in a dungeon. And also if you zoom in enough, they'll look at the camera when you're facing them and the eyes even follow the camera around. The menus look pretty good. I quite like the playful style, though I still like the look of the previous game's characters a bit more. But we've had two games that look very similar, so, you know, I don't really mind the change overall. It can't always stay the same, right? In terms of sound, I think the game is okay in that regard. The music seems appropriate, if not a little uninspiring. Voiceovers are Japanese only, so no English dub here. Sound effects are okay again, you know, something basically what you'd expect from a game like this. But then there's the footstep sound, though. They are super repetitive and awful. I mean, they're at least different depending on the surface you're walking on, but still, surely they could have done better there. Overall, I find Genkai Toki 7 Pirates H to be a lot of fun. The booby training is funny, though it can be a bit more tedious than just leveling up like a normal RPG. The amount of grinding is reduced though, so in a way, that's the trade-off, so, you know, it's not too bad. I do think Morero Chronicle and Crystal are both overall more refined games. They're also a bit more old school, but I like also the challenge that they have. The illustrations were excellent and uh, there was a lot of extra content, like for example trying to get all the monster girls, which there are much more of in those games. Not to mention they also have the several, you know, those several outfits that you could collect, like I mentioned before. Seven Pirates H is a, yeah, it feels a bit more stripped down, but it is easier, which some people like. I do appreciate the fact that the game is different, since the dungeon crawlers were so similar to each other. It's nice to play something in the series that is different. The booby training is an amusing addition, and I don't think uh, we would have gotten that if the game stayed in 2D. I guess you could describe Seven Pirates H as a relaxed, lighthearted, low frustration RPG with amusing fan service antics. And overall, I think that is a positive description. I will also mention that I didn't activate the DLC that comes with Seven Pirates H. So yeah, it comes with the DLC that you normally had to buy in the Vita version. There's some DLC items that make the game easier, and I didn't want to upset the game balance, so that's why I didn't turn them on. Just so you know, there are options that can reset breast size, and there's also a limiter removal thing, so you can go beyond whatever the biggest cup size is. I think it's I normally. So yeah, you can, you can go way above that. Good for people who are into that, and if not, then for a comedic effect, definitely. I think that covers things pretty good. Once the limited edition comes in, I'll show you that. Let me know what you think, especially if you've played the other Genkai Toki games. I'm interested to hear how you think Seven Pirates compares to previous games, and if you like the changes or not. I guess now we'll look forward to Castle Panzas. I'm hoping that'll be released on the Switch too. I never really mention it, but there is a second channel where I talk about stuff that doesn't always fit on the main channel. Sometimes I'll upload some more casual videos or maybe snippets of very important gameplay footage. Remember to check out patreon.com slash YSN if you want to help the channel financially. And then you can have a look there to see what benefits each of the three tiers have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.